One of the biggest questions I get as an EMT, when do you need to call for a paramedic? When should you call for a paramedic intercept? When to call ALS? Here we go. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach here, back at you with a brand new video. Be sure to watch the entire video and stay for the whole video to get all the tips here. Hit the like button down below, smash that like button, and be sure to hit subscribe down below as well. Tap that little bell right there. So here we are. You're an EMT right now, and maybe you're just starting to work on the road. I've found that even EMTs with years of experience, still struggle on when to call ALS and when to take it in BLS. Because there can be a fine line there. We're gonna talk about that right now. The first thing that I want you to look at, and you wanna stay tuned and watch the whole video, because it's not just one thing that's gonna determine it. You gotta look at the whole patient. So number one, the first thing we're gonna look at is vital signs. So are the vital signs stable? or unstable. So what does that mean? Well, I'll give you an example. If a patient is hypotensive, if a patient is, let's say, 80 over 30, that would be an unstable patient, right? We can all agree on that because they're under 90 systolic, which means they are not getting appropriate blood flow, oxygen to their organs. That might be a time a paramedic intercept might make sense. I'll give you another, uh, another one here. Let's say that you have a patient and they're severely tachycardic. Let's say, they're, let's say they're 180, 200. That could be an SVT patient. Adenosine, cardioversion might be needed to make sure they don't go into arrest down the road. There's another example, bradycardia. So what if the patient's heart rate is super low, like 30 and irregular, you find? Whoa. Okay, that might be something where those paramedic skills, a pacemaker, might be needed, right? Now let's look at stuff like pulse oximetry and stuff like that. Well, we have oxygen, but as far as the paramedic's toolbox, depending on where you practice, certain nebulizers might be, might be needed. Other meds like epinephrine might be needed on a certain respiratory call. We might want to have a medic, right? Remembering that the main tool box of the paramedic is the cardiology skill, the pharmacology skill, and then finally the ALS skills they possessed. That's why you're going to call the medic for this reason. And here it is. Calling the paramedic intercept will actually get the patient stabilized and they'll make it to the hospital. That's why there's paramedics in EMS to stabilize these life threats so they can make it to the hospital and get definitive care there. Now, the second point I wanna talk about is the trauma patients, okay? So this is where things kinda of get overrided, if you will, okay? Let's say we have a really bad trauma patient, and let's say that we are 10 minutes away from the hospital. The patient needs a surgeon. Are we going to intercept with a paramedic? No. No, I wouldn't recommend that. I recommend load and go, get him to the hospital, we're only 10 minutes out, right? So here's what you want to think about. Another, another tool in your toolbox, the new EMT is, is this a medical patient or a trauma patient? The medical patient, we might be able to, as a paramedic, be able to really help them out tremendously during your transport time, whether it's short or long, that intercept might make sense. The trauma patient, they need blood, they need a surgeon, they need a lot of scans, stuff like that, to see what's going on. A lot of the BLS is gonna take care of that stuff, right? So that's why I skew more towards just get them to the hospital, where medical, I might say, you know what, let's intercept with the medic because they can do this really quick and make a big difference in that patient outcome. You follow me on that? Okay, great. Now let's say you decide to go ahead and call the paramedic. This is a very important point. 
Let's say your transport time is 30 minutes, for example, okay? You do not wait on scene for the paramedic to come to you. That's not an intercept. That's delaying care. What you wanna do, if you recognize, and I'll give you an example here. Let's say you go to a patient, and this patient is a severe anaphylaxis patient. You're 30 minutes out from the hospital. They're in severe anaphylaxis, hives, wheezing, unstable vitals. You're unsure if they're gonna make it to the hospital without going into arrest. You know the paramedic has AOS skills, the, the cardiology, the pharmacology skills that will help this patient make it to the hospital. That's why we're here, okay? Now, what do you do? You get, a, get that patient into the ambulance as fast as you can. You know, obviously, stair, chair, stretcher, all that stuff, okay? Do your BLS, okay? The best you can, stabilize the patient. And then what are you gonna do? You're going to drive like some sirens to the hospital and the paramedic is gonna intercept you and meet you on the way to the hospital. That's a good intercept. Now, the third thing that I want you to think about here is what does your patient need is the third thing. Is there something that you know is in that paramedic's toolbox that can help this patient right now in the next five, 10, 15 minutes? That if they only had this thing, the patient could improve so much. That's why you would call a paramedic, but again, this is based on vital signs and the transport time. Because remember, while paramedics are great, we have a hospital, okay? We have a hospital to get to as well. So if, let's just say, for example, if your service is you're five or 10 minutes out from the hospital and you're in a call where you're five, 10 minutes out, you're probably just gonna rapid transport and call the ER, hey, we're coming in. If the paramedic can meet me en route, great. If not, I'm going, I got a critical patient. That is what I recommend you do, okay? Now, everyone has protocols, but if I'm you know, waving my magic wand here, that is what I believe is the best thing. I wanna tell you a story about that. A time where I was actually, honestly, a little pissed to hear this over the radio. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do this. I overheard a call on the radio. We were a, a paramedic unit, me being the paramedic, EMC partner, we're driving around, we're on call, waiting for a call, basically. And I hear over the radio a, a basic life support crew, so two EMTs, and they're actually calling for a paramedic because of a stroke patient. So what is the paramedic going to do besides place an IV for a stroke patient that an EMT cannot do? Not much. Good stroke care is find that they're having a stroke, so do a fast exam, get a history with that. Vital signs, blood sugar is the big one there. And then, yeah, I mean, you could do an EKG, right? A lot of places now, EMTs even have EKG ability with the 12 wood EKG just to put stickers on and then transmit it, right? But even if you didn't, it's a stroke, we're not a heart issue. So why would a medic be needed in that case, right? For an intercept, well, this crew ended up waiting on scene. For the, and that is delaying the time of that stroke. When they could have recognized, gotten the blood sugar, gotten the vitals, and then rapid transport to the hospital while saying, hey, the medic wants to meet me, great. Well, I'm going, like the sirens to the hospital, to the stroke center that was only 12 to 15 minutes away. So could you guys with strokes and traumas, what's most important? Time. Time is most important in strokes and traumas. So that is a situation where you might want to think about that. Remember that, strokes and traumas. Now on the other side, when you really should call for that medic intercept is when you know in your heart of hearts that there's an intervention that a paramedic can do that will either save this person's life en route give them more time, or you know, you know what? If this paramedic doesn't intercept with us, I'm unsure if this patient's gonna make it based on the vital signs, what your thinking's going on with the patient, and the transport time. If you remember those three things, I'll put them on the screen here. Vital signs, transport time, and what's going on with the patients. 
What's, what is your clinical thought with the patient? Remember that when calling for a medic and remember, traumas, strokes, go. And never ever wait on scene for a paramedic. You meet them en route. That's how you do it. If you are one of these three people, if you are someone getting ready for EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic school, maybe you're somebody right now in school and you're having a hard time either with online school or a hard time in traditional class, and you want to understand this content cold so you can best pass and understand it. Or maybe you're somebody right now who's getting ready for on a job, on the road, or you're studying for national registry exams. For any one of those people, click the link in the description down below and get access to my video study course. It's a guide of over 180 plus videos plus access to our community group, which is in the thousand strong of providers just like you going through school and national registry exams. My friends, I will catch you in the next video. I'll see you next time. Let's go. Don't waste any time. Don't don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. I went through it. I, I spent the time and money in other areas, and I'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time. The first couple of videos I watched, um, when I noticed it, it just I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Just kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain. And I, I just knew right then and there, um, I have to have this program. I have to have all the information that he's willing to give. I need all of it.